Finally, we now know those whom President Muhammad Buhari wants in his team as ministers as the Senate reveals the letter sent to the National Assembly with 43 nominees. And the People's Democratic Party, PDP, says it is not impressed by the couple of people President Muhammad Buhari has put together to work with him. The opposition party says the list is uninspiring. Hello everyone and welcome to the program. This is live on China's television. I'm Sean Wakimali at China's television's global headquarters in Lagos. Our countdown is officially over today. The countdown of expectations of President Buhari's formation of a cabinet. We've been counting down to this day and at last we now know those who will be working with the president <clears throat> since he was sworn in over 50 days ago. Before we get into the conversation, we'll break it down for you. Look at those who made the list. Look at those who did not make the list. Look at what potential that uh, list and the cabinet formation will look like and will pose for Nigerians. We'll first of all, get you to see some of the other political stories we're following for you on our political round. The Edo State Governor, Godwin Obaseki, is calling for the decentralization of the nation's security structure in order to effectively manage the challenges of herders, farmers' clashes, and irregular migration in the country. He also insists that there is urgent need for security agencies to differentiate between real herdsmen and criminals who pretend to be herders across the country. We must now begin to put in place the security uh, framework and arrangements to decipher, you know, and the complications and complexities that particularly for those people who are operating on the taking criminal and terrorist activities under the guise of uh, headers and clashes. The Governorship Election Petition Tribunal sitting in Mina, Niger State, has adjourned the judgment in the petition against Governor Bubba Kassani Bello. He said will be communicated to parties involved. The tribunal led by Justice John. Iboji concluded his sitting following the adoption of final written addresses by parties in the matter. <laughs> the governors of Benue and Nasarawa State have asked for a revised security strategy for the old Benue Plateau State, which includes Benue, Nasarawa, and Plateau State, to check insecurity. Governor Samuel Tom says the purpose of the visit is to see an end to border community conflict. Governor Abdullahi reminds the people of Benue and Nasarawa State of their common interests and shared value which must not be eroded by political and economic interest. We are one and the same people. First, we have to go back and remember the region where we come from. And everywhere, the most important resource is the people. No political aspiration, no political ambition is worth the life of a single person. <laughs> Therefore, our total interest is to protect our people, to protect our states, to protect where we come from, so that we will continue to work together. So let's get the proceedings started, everyone. And um, what we're talking about today is what we are perhaps on channel television right here on Politics Today. We've been counting down to look for those who President Buhari will have in his cabinet. So President Buhari today submitted a list of 43 ministerial nominees to the Senate for screening and confirmation. Some of the names on the list are former governor of Aquabum State, Governor Gauzui Fabio. The spokesperson of the Buhari campaign organization, Festus Keyamo, as well as former governor of Benue State, George Akume. Some immediate past ministers also made their return uh, to the cabinet. So if you look at, we'll break it down for you. That is how they appear 
by state. So you can see them, wherever state you belong, you know who is representing your state on Buhari's cabinet. But if you look at it, let's break it down for you a bit more so that you can get a sense of what has happened in all of these. So we have over 43 names submitted by the uh, president, eight former governors, about six or so women in that list, 12 former ministers returned into that list. Take a look at uh, some other analysis that we are having for you right here. It's, take a look at those who are perhaps returning now, some of the prominent faces of those who are returning, Babatune Fashala, who was uh, the Minister for Works, Power and Housing, Rosie Miyamichi, the former Minister of Transport, Chris Ngige, former Minister of Labor, Ogwenaya Ono, former Minister of Science and Tech, Geoffrey Oyema, former Foreign Affairs Minister, Lai Mohamed, former Minister of Information, Abubakar Malami, former Minister of uh, uh, the Attorney General and former Minister of, uh, 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 of Justice. Yeah. Those are some of the returnees into the cabinet. But look at some of the prominent newcomers, some of those whom you will perhaps, uh, uh, some people say they're surprised. So look at them. Uh, Fesos Kayamo, senior advocate <laughs> of Nigeria, made it to the list. Uh, perhaps a lot of people are already feeling uh, rose to these peoples. He was a uh, uh, civil rights activist. Um, a lot of people were suggesting which position these people will be? Because we are Pabio, a lawyer, a former governor of Akwa Bomstein, Alon Rubin Mamura, former speaker in Lagos, Sunday Dari, a journalist, and uh, who also was on the board of the NCC, Sharon Ekazo, who has also worked uh, uh, in the uh, Persata heading uh, the uh, pensions board, Bemisola Saraki, a sister to the former governor of Korati, the former senator. Emekan Wajuba is in the House of Representatives. Timmy Presiva, a former governor of uh, Bayelsa State. Ralph Aregbashola, former governor of Oshun State. Let's get talking at the one. <clears throat> Tonight, I have a benefit of experience and knowledge of politics and, of course, what is happening. I have with me Senator Adesha Ogunlewe a former minister of works and a former senator. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. It's my pleasure. And from our Abuja studio is uh, Mr. Kletus Urban. He's a chieftain of the APC and uh, a former member of, uh, uh, a former lawmaker. Thank you so much for coming on today. Let me ask you, uh, Senator, yes. are you impressed with this? Oh, not too bad, definitely. One must congratulate Mr. President, at least for assembling this um, level of people. Also, I congratulate those who have been nominated to serve this country. And I congratulate the National Assembly for having very little work to do. Why? They have only eight people to screen, properly speaking, who are neither senators before, as of red before, or governors, I mean, or members of the cabinet before. To screen an existing member of cabinet who have just left is so easy to do. So only very eight of them that are totally unknown. So let us see what they can do. And usually the practice and the convention we always find is that uh, most of uh, nominees who are former members of the National Assembly just take their bow and go. Uh -huh, yes. So we have the likes of Chris Ngige. Ngige. Uh, we uh, have uh, Goswe Fabio. Uh, we have Nwajuba. Mamora. 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 Those ones will just come and bow. So they can smooth screen in a day or two. Really? Nigeria will just be on the move. Do you think this is a kind of people that Nigerians are yearning for. Over 50 days, the president says he wants to take his time to find those who are befitting to be in his cabinet, those he knows. But is it worth the wait and is, is it worth the pain of expectations from Nigerians? Definitely one would have thought that this list could have come very early because there are no new names there that are not unexpected. So, but it's, a, it's the president, he, has, it's, he took his time to assemble this level of people. The only people I would have suspected to be there that are not there are, you know, professors who have done research in the university on so many of these issues could come in. You know, members and Nigerians that are in diaspora who have worked either at the uh, international level, either at AM, IMF or World Bank, or, you know, those people who have international connection could also have been included. The person also that, that could have also been included uh, you know, people who are entrepreneurs, who have been in business, who have done a lot of work. You have names that come to your mind. Yes. 
You, you don't like need to it. mention names. There are people who are who should have made it. Made it yes, yes. But that notwithstanding, the collection is, is to my mind not too bad at all. All right. So we'll, we'll break it down and look at the arrows and, and look at what has happened, the politics of. But let me quickly ask uh, Honorable Cletus Auburn. And it's, I'm going to pose this question to you from what the PDP said today. The PDP says that, that the ministerialist presented to the Senate today is colorless, stagnant, uninspiring, and do not convey any sense of hope or purposeful governance under the APC. <clears throat> Your thoughts, Honorable Clevon, uh, Auburn? Well, they are, they are speaking in a, in a familiar tone. It is a familiar tone. It's a familiar rhetoric coming from PDP. Maybe if we had had the former ministers from under the PDP regime in 16 years who ran us into where we are, if they would have been surprised and that they would be happy and then clap for the Mr. President. I do not know, for example, if we have to go even and do a dissection and then break down everything that we have, as you have done here now. Are you saying that the first to Kayamo is a no surprise and is a nobody is colorless? Will you say Chris Ngige is a colorless person? Well, I mean, name them on that list. Uh, from my state, for example, you have a, a man who, has been, who rose to become a group managing director of NNPC. Will you say he's a colorless person familiar with the uh, petroleum industry? And uh, we can go on and on. So I do not think that uh, PDP is saying anything. I think for want of what to say, they must continue to rant and continue to engage themselves and see themselves as being busy. Otherwise, uh, first, I want to commend president, the president for coming in within 60 days to give us the, you remember my, the last time I was in the Lagos studio on this matter, I gave a three-week gap and I, I have not been disappointed. And then two is that uh, I thought what people should be speaking about now is the delay that will come from the National Assembly. And it com uh, it, the National Assembly has even told us they are starting tomorrow. And like uh, the former Minister of Works have uh, noted, you have many people who are going to do, take a bow. Many of the, them legislators, are pabio, they are pabios of the world. You call them colorless. Eight-year uh, eight governor in Aquaibom State, a sitting senator, minority leader, first time uh, uh, in the Senate and becomes a minority leader above, uh, above his colleagues who had confidence in him. You call him colorless. I don't understand. They must have to teach us the new lexicon and where they are bringing their language from. And then finally, let me also say that I want to uh, congratulate uh, those who have made the list and expect that uh, they will hit the ground running. But having said that, and maybe in the, progress, in the process of this, uh, I want to also say that I do not agree that we should have technocrats brought from abroad or from heaven or from diaspora when people worked and participated in the ideological standpoint of the APC and the notion of what uh, the president stands for. He will pick people who worked with him to first get the mandate and then who understand the speed and the spirit behind the government and the next level agenda. You don't bring total strangers. We had it last time and we almost ran into hiccups, especially in the bot and parasitas and other MDAs. That is again where the Mr. President has to look at because if you have to wait and wait for people who do not understand and do not share in the ideological standpoint and the manifesto of the APC, then you are going to get total strangers who right. will either deliberately mislead the process or will not understand what to do. And the blame quick, goes quick. back to Mr. President. Yeah. Today we are having a cabinet that is familiar with what the APC stands for. Okay, quickly before we go on, uh, on our break, because when we come back from that break, we'll be talking about the roles and the jobs of these people, the campaign promises, what the nation is facing right now. But I want you to quickly react to these, and I'll probably get a 30 seconds reaction also from Senator Ogunlewe. Ibe Kachukus of this world, Audu Ogbe, Adebayo Shitu, Professor Adewale, Salon, Solomon Dalong, Mansour Danali, Ogbunayan Onu, Abdurrahman Dambaza, Okichuku Enelama, and you name it. A lot of them, Usano Usano Uhuru, Aisha Abubakar, uh, Usman Jebre, they do not make the cut this time around. What do you think could have been responsible? If you ask me, if you ask me, I will tell you that the president did the needful, and I'm sure he has the security information that must have informed, that must have informed uh, his decision to drop most of it. You will remember that even the media had gone into assessment of each of these ministers and ministries and their performances. Apart from Audu Ogbe, who may perhaps surprise you, I do not think that there is any surprise. I'm, I'm sure that Audu Ogbe, maybe he may have voluntarily decided to withdraw from public service 
otherwise, I am sure that for the rest of them, if you look at the rating even from media and public outcry, they were uh, not in any way uh, surprising dropouts because the dropping of those, those persons was sufficiently uh, enunciated and adumbrated upon by both the media and the public opinion mm. analysts that helped this government. In, the, in fact, they were part of those who almost demarketed the, the regime in the last four years. And I'm very sure that the president All must right. have taken note both of the public opinion, public analysis, and background information and performance sheet of these okay. ministers who didn't make a return but, uh, to this. Uh, Honorable Clarice Auburn, you're speaking from the perspective of the party, from the perspective of an insider, and I'm also talking to Stanley Ogunlawe, who has the experience of being in the cabinet and being in the Senate. But we'll take a breather. When we come back, we'll be talking about how much of the job they have on their hands. Can they deliver? Has the president brought together the best hands this nation can offer? We'll talk about that when we return from this break. Join us again. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us on the program. So President Buhari has sent nominations of uh, cabinet members, prospective cabinet members, to the Senate. And you heard there that there will be a tedious work that will be done in the coming days on the list sent by the president. My panel tonight, Senator Adesha Ogunlewe, a former Minister of Work and a former Senator, has been talking to us, as well as Honorable Cleto Sabon, a former lawmaker and a chieftain of the APC. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming on tonight. Uh, I wanted you to react quickly. Let me make a quick correction. I understand that there are seven women, not six, uh, that are listed on that cabinet list. Seven women and uh, 12 uh, former ministers who are returning. Let me show you. There are prominent newcomers that you, uh, that you might be seeing their face, faces more often as they will be working closely with President Muhammad of Hawaii. First of all, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Uh, girls, we are Pabio. Olon Rube Mamora. Tony Dari, Sharon Nikazo, Bremi Sola Seraki, Emeka Wajuba, uh, Timmy Presiva, Ralph Agbeshola. There are more governors that are in the cabinet. We have more ex-governors in the cabinet, ex-governors in the Senate, and we're seeing more of them now in the cabinet. Mm. There are key ministries to fill. Some of the uh, analyses that we'll be making in the next few minutes. The Ministry of Power, Ministry of Work, Ministry of the Economy, the Petroleum Ministry, the Office of the Attorney General, and the Ministry of Justice. These are critical roles that will be filled. And if you look at it again, the returnees, those who are returning to the cabinet, is it that they were they passed and that's why they got a job again? Babatune Fashola, uh, Rotimi Amichi, Christine Gige, Ogbona Onu, Geoffrey Onyema, Lai Muhammad. Those are some of the faces that were there and are returning right now. Let me get back to my uh uh, yes, uh, Senator Gunlewe, if you look at it, uh, the key ministries of you and the prominent newcomers, what is your take on those that are left behind, those that were not uh, brought back, the Ibe Kachuku, the outdoors of this world? Well, it is, uh, it is the prerogative of Mr. President to pick and choose. Maybe he has some information that we don't have about them. You know, the presidency, they have a lot of, you know, information that can gather. And the substitute they have chosen are equally, you know, of prominent uh, status, and they can do the job well. The only area I'm not too happy about is representation. Nigeria Academy of Engineering, they should have been represented. The professors who are doing a lot of research in all our universities, they should have been represented. Because in any country, researchers have a role to play in your national development. You have to pick them out and let them come and, and, and participate. The national development is not all for politicians. There are people who also have equal knowledge of how to govern, what to do, what we need that should have been included. But it doesn't matter if they are not included. Let us go ahead and see what they can do. Hmm. If you look at some of the positions to fill right now, uh, in fact, I understand also some corrections to be made. Uh, 14 former ministers, I understand they're returning also. Seven women, 14 former ministers who are returning. Uh, to uh, on that list. If you look at the positions to fill, power, works, economy, petroleum, uh, do you see Fashola returning to power and works? Let's leave it for the Mr. President to determine. Because one of the things that the last uh, National Assembly asked for is that when you're submitting the names, put the portfolio so that they can be screened based on the portfolios because they will be doing open jacket screening for them. It is for the person who is appointing them to prepare the policy paper. It's not for the minister to 
tell us the policy they are going to implement. So, but I mean, is, what I am I'm saying is that it, it, isn't it right it for the matter. president to attach the it office it he will, it, 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 it will doesn't like matter. It doesn't matter. A person who is not even a professional in the field once can perform through his own ingenuity, through his own. But when know, the Senate are screening them. I mean, they're screening to test if they have the capacity to hold these offices. Shouldn't they have an idea of what office? Because that's the question they will be asking them. They should be asking them ministry-specific questions. No, it is the party that has the policy that they will implement. How are you going to ask me about the policy of the party? The, the party should give them what they expect them to do. Then you can now ask questions. If you want to increase our housing to this level, what are you going to do? If you want our university to be, if you want to, I mean, uh, decrease poverty, what are you going to do? The illiteracy, children out of school, what are you going to do? Because, uh, These are Sen Senator, as a former security. minister, yes. as a former minister, what the what with what President Buhari says he wants to achieve the next level agenda? This crop of people, which of this ministry, maybe three, do you think are critical and should have at least? Round pegs and round holes. What is the expectation of this, the president for this country? It is not for the minister to determine what the president wants. It is either the party or the president that will have, you know, a crop of people who will now present paper. You are a minister of health. Our policy is primary health care. This is what we want you to do. This is the number of houses we want to, to, to get in another four years. These are the roads we want to construct. We want everything to the president. Uh, yes, what the is, president wants. It, it is for the party and the president to tell the minister what to do. It is not for the minister to tell the government what they must do. Was no. that what play out when yes. you were working with Obasanjo? Yes, Obasanjo prepared paper for every minister. I guess Audubon was the chairman of the party at yes. the time. Well, was he very, very? I mean, very... He, he did the interview. We were interviewed by a panel. Okay, let me ask uh, Honorable Auburn. We, we, the, the offices and the ministry that are available, uh, which of these comes to your mind that are critical for this government based on the next level agenda? And who and, uh, and all of these lists do you think could fill into some of these positions? Well, I, I speak here first uh, in this respect. I'll speak as a party man and speaking through the party from the party manifesto. One of the critical things which we have come to do, you, the expectations may not, the potential may not be the expectation, and the expectation may not become the practical. What is practicable and what has happened now when we came to office and what the manifesto of the APC is, is first reduction of poverty, the insecurity in the, in the system, corruption and all that. Today, you now discover that in the fraud burner, for you to even go to school, for you to have a road, for you to have power, for you to have a house to stay in, you must be secure. So you are going to find that on the front burner for this government going down the line is security first. Then, of course, when you have stabilized the security system in the country and changed the, uh, the, the security architecture, you are going to now face education because with education, even security itself will be taken care of. Health will be taken care of. With education, you are going to have people using the roads and using the facilities well. Therefore, I will expect that in this government, you are going to have power as the next, the third thing on the agenda, and of course, agriculture, which is going to occupy majority of our people. So with education, with agriculture, with power, you are going to have security settled by the government at the topmost level. All right. Having said that, let me get back to the first question you asked uh, the, 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 the distinguished senator sitting out there with your former uh, minister. Yeah. You cannot expect that the minister should cut out for himself. He has a job description given to him. Therefore, he's going to be a generalist, in this, if you talk in medical terms, a general practitioner. So when he's coming to face the Senate and going for screening, he's going to be screened as if he's going to take anywhere else. But if you ask me, you are right. seeing some people already whose job has been cut out for them. You found a Kayamu, who was the spokesperson in the presidential campaign. You find a doctor, um, uh, Gige, for example, who was in labor, a medical doctor, right. who rose to we become need to a leave permanent it like that because of our and time, then, uh, Honorable Auburn. We, we are obviously out of time. Uh, I wish we had more time because there's a lot to talk about. Well, I must sincerely thank you for your thoughts and uh, what you shared to us with us tonight on the program. Thank you so much for coming on. I'm uh, Honorable Clarice Auburn, a member, a chieftain of the APC and a former Senator Adesha Ogunle. Always a pleasure. I uh, benefiting from your experience as a former minister. Thank you so much for coming on. Well, the eyes have it, everyone, and that's where we leave it.
Thanks so much for watching. I'm Shion Okimale. Bye-bye.